looking at um, spirit-led community, which is something that I preached about a couple of weeks back. Um, I think, you know, we, we can all agree, it's one of those things, isn't it? And it's a lovely phrase, those who encountered the living Christ to intentionally seek his will and purpose for our local churches and every expression of our shared life. I think that's something we'd all want to sign up to, isn't it? So, you know, it's a good thing. It sounds great. I think if someone said to you, would you, know, would you like your church to be like this? Uh, and I think many people are going to say no, are they? Um, but, you know, what I wanted us to think about and explore a bit is, you know, it sounds great, but how do we know? How do we know that we're doing it? How do we know that that actually reflects who we are? and what we're doing. And um, I think it's it's good when you get one of these soundbite things to break it down into key words. And for me, the key words are those four on there. Encounter, intentional, purpose, and every expression. And I think it's good that there's encounter right at the beginning there, because I think that's at the heart of, of what we're exploring here, being spirit led. And we're going to look at that bit more uh, as we go along. Um, intentional, you know, that's really important because that word is a bit of a buzzword, you know, but it, it's an important word because actually it's no good if we just, if our sole purpose is just about being together and being nice together. You know, that, that doesn't actually cut it, does it? That's not what Jesus called us to be. That doesn't make us a church. That makes us a nice group of people that like each other. And uh, nice as that may be, I think Jesus called us to something a bit more important than nice. So we need to be intentional. And uh, along with that, obviously, is our purpose. You know, we need to understand what our purpose is. And I think, unfortunately, uncomfortable as it is, Jesus is pretty clear what our purpose is. Our purpose is mission, isn't it? To share what we have with people who haven't got it. Um, we, there's no wriggling out of that. It is the Great Commission. It's what Jesus left us to be. The church has a purpose and it's a mission. Uh, and often what we do on the inside, we do it because it is how we live out our mission. You know, Jesus says, they'll know your mind because you love one another. Great to love one another, but the reason we love one another is because they need to know that we're his. So there's a, there's a purpose. And every expression, everything, everything we do, not just on Sunday, not just the bits we do in this building, but every expression of our lives is part of our mission as a church out in the world. Everything we do, Monday to Saturday, is part of that expression of who we are. It is potential mission if we can liberate it and fill it with the Spirit. So what are the signs and symptoms then that we are uh, full of the Spirit? Now you might think that Alan and I have gone a bit Greek mad, maybe we have. <laughs> um, but I think this is one of those occasions where the original Greek does help us actually, because we have, we have a word, well we used to call it the Holy Ghost, didn't we, which was incredibly unhelpful, um, because uh, that just, you know, conjures up Casper for me, um, you know, and that's you know, although that was a fitting word for a time, it conjures up different things, doesn't it, for us? Um, so you know, what did what did the early church call it? What did Jesus call it? How was how... so? There are two words which are really, really important. The first one, uh, you see it here, that says pneuma theo. Okay, because that that kind of little housey shape is a p, which is very right. Greek is incredibly confusing, really, really confusing. Um, but that says pneuma thea. And pneuma comes from like pneumatic drills, air, breath, filling with air. So it's God inspired, literally, God breathed in. Now, I think that's a much more helpful image, isn't it, of the Spirit, that, we, that this is God that we breathe in that we take inside, that we fill our lungs with. For me, that's a much more healthy image than a kind of wispy spirit type image. The other one is down here, hop, which is the definite article in Greek, that's as far as I go, with grammar. <laughs> um, 
And, and that word says parakletos. The paraclete, not the holy parakeet, as one of my friends said, <laughs> which is very confusing because it is always pictured as a bird. So, you know, you can see how you put the things together. Parakletos, literally translated, means helper. Now, that's, again, it's a very active word, isn't it? It's a helper because we're meant to be doing something. You know, the Spirit is meant to be filling us and enabling us, getting us to do stuff, helping us. So, Hopefully, you know, that helps us to get a bit more of an image. Now, you've been sat down for a full five minutes, so we need to do something. So, I need a couple of volunteers who might be good with their hands. Yep, Juliet, good. Glad you volunteered, I was going to pick on you. <laughs> and anybody else good with their hands? Yep, come on, Chris. Right, now, you've both got a, you've both got a task. There's a stack of uh, modelling balloons over there. All right. Julia, I want you to just make anything. Right, out of a few modeling balloons. Chris, I'd like you to make a hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go and help yourself. Uh, don't know how many you want to use. Uh, other people can help by, you know, sort of encouraging them or showing them what to do. Uh, and we'll just see how things, uh, I think, I think I've blown them up. Right. Your, uh, feel, feel the video. This is great, because I think I need to see uh, your... Uh, Fantastic. Um, the thing is, I think this is quite a good image, isn't it? Of you know, a balloon when it's filled and it's full of air like that. It's a completely different item, isn't it? It's uh, you can do stuff with it. Um, a balloon. <laughs> I just want to do some make it a bit simpler. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Down this uprising, and they get the disciples, and 
um, and uh, they're just so incredibly filled with their encounter of the risen Lord Jesus that they can't get any sense out of them at all. It's really quite well presented. Uh, but they, they look, this guy finds the risen Lord Jesus, and it completely changes his life, and he has to walk away from everything. And this is a, a bit of a film where they're looking for him, they're, they Pontius Pilate and his sidekick are looking for this Roman to find out where he's gone, and that they're trying to de discover what's happening. Is it a ransom? Do not seek me. Do not follow or wander. Persecute no one on my behalf. I have seen two things which cannot reconcile. A man dead without question. And that same man alive again. I pursue him, the Nazarene, to ferret the truth. Clavius Aquila Valerius Niger. His seal, sir. Must be a plague. My right hand turned against me. How could he follow that Hebrew? Perhaps it's true. Jesus and it changes everything and the result is a real mission. I'm going to do a bit of reading quietly on our own now, if that's okay. Um, this is a book which has been incredibly influential in terms of uh, mission. We were all uh, asked to read it at college. Uh, I think you know it's been incredibly influential in the Church of England and in the Free Churches. It's really no nonsense look at how we do effective mission. I know that you've, uh, you did stuff on the Leaders' Day from it before I came. Um, but I wanted to read the snippet and there's um, how many should be on the chair. And I've marked it with pencil way, start from position, start from place with the mountain climbing picture, which is not to do with what they're looking at. Just have a little read through that. <laughs> yeah, lights back on yeah. you mm -hmm. Oh, you might have. Huh? So I'll give you a few minutes to just read through that and uh, see if there's anything about it that challenges you. Or... Can we just uh, maybe come back, back into the room? I can hear that there are lots of quite similar conversations uh, going through, but I'd just like to you know, share a bit. If I can sort of go to each group and just ask what you want. Is there something that you, you know, you can come to start over here? 
hands out to draw. Anything that particularly found you were being drawn to, to Some people, of course there are other people, exact opposite, but there are a lot of people out there who show great love to other people. Yeah, mm. yeah. we yeah. do not have a monopoly mm. on being good to each other, do we? But I think we've got to realise and yeah. be more humble. Yeah. Because what yeah. we've got, the love which we've got to show, is, is love plus. Yes. And that's the love of God yes. shown forth in our hearts. Yeah. Yeah. It comes back to an yeah. encounter with God. Really. It does. It does that you know there has to be something more is this resonating with people is this you know what about this group <coughs> over here what did <coughs> what did you i saw you scribbling away a bit of paper um but well i just the thing that's been nagging at me all week this thing about sharing a hunger 
and, and how that's not sharing the food that fills that hunger. That somehow what our mission is about is opening people's eyes to their spiritual hunger or us being spiritually hungry ourselves in a way that is attractive and makes people recognise that they themselves have a spiritual hunger. And, and I think it's a little bit what you're saying there, Robert, about, you know, we're not the solution to people's problems. We are not, you know, we can do good things and, and we should do good things, but actually the, the, the deeper spiritual mission is not about solving people's problems, it's about sharing hunger and, and encouraging them to recognise their vulnerability and, and hunger. Yeah. I think that's difficult. But... It is difficult because people don't recognise it. Hey Robert, won't mind me sharing a story. Robert's very good at pointing these people. Could you visit them? Could you phone them? Because he's got all these contacts. So mm -hmm. there's a, a couple um, that we've just done very tentative contact with. Uh, they've been experiencing mm -hmm. some issues. And I popped around to see them. And uh, the, the wife of this couple spent a good 20 minutes telling me how she's not a Christian, she doesn't go to church, she's really angry with God actually. She probably spends more time dialoguing with God than most people in the church. <laughs> and you know, what I was wanting to gently say to her is, it's okay to be angry with God. Actually, what you've got there is a relationship with God because you're angry with Him about what's happened to you in the past. To see that as a, as a necessary part of being a human being is a fantastic place to start, isn't it? Of course, she just saw it as, well, I can't come to church because I swear at Him. Well, fine. <laughs> that's fine. That's a relationship. That's a hunger. You know, and that's and that's amazing when we find that, isn't it? But you know, people bury it quite well. In terms of our um, how we sort of move forward as a church, and I think all of these things are you know incredibly important. Um, when we've done, you might remember when I first came here, the mission audit um, about. The, the church basically because I had to do it for part of my but it's a really important thing to do it really helpful and uh, we've done some stuff recently on leaders days and away days um, and, and that points to a very consistent message that actually this church is brilliant at the love thing you know so he's talking there isn't he about there's two strands to evangelism and there's an encounter with a person who is the truth it's not a truth that we want to share it's a person who is the truth and there's the love thing. Well, we're great at the love thing. We do loads of the love thing. The problem is that in terms of our own experience and encounter, we often feel like that. We often feel like we're doing the love thing running on empty. And then we can end up, as Robert said, actually not actually doing anything very different to the people around us who don't know Jesus. <laughs> We've missed that, that X factor, if you will, of what makes us different to the world around us because we're running on empty in terms of what inspires us and you know, fills us and, and I don't know what the answer is to that I think that's something we have to explore as a church because it's so easy for us to end up like that church at Ephesus where they do all the right things and they've persevered and they've kept going and they've run this and they've run that and, they? and they're in the midst of it They've lost their first love. Now I don't know what the answer is to that. Uh, I, I think it's it's very easy to keep thinking we're having an encounter with Jesus and actually miss a mark somewhat. I'm sure we're going to get told to move on again. I just want to encounters with Jesus are just a meeting. I think we can we can as individuals and as a church fall into the trap of just meeting without having an encounter with Jesus. Um, if you get time, I'm not going to do, look at them now, but I'm sure they're going to tell us to move around again in a minute. But can you look at these stories, maybe in your own time? There are two of them where Jesus heals someone, and it doesn't just heal them, it completely changes their life. You know, Jesus says to them, don't tell anybody. They can't help themselves. They can't tell the whole village, the whole... You know, Jesus says they've really got who Jesus is in that one encounter. And, and if you look at... If you Compare and contrast those stories. Often, it's, it's not about length of dialogue. Jesus doesn't sit down and do two ways to live with them. You know, he hasn't got a booklet. But it, it's just a meeting where two people out of the four get it. And their lives have changed. 
two people out of the four are healed and go away completely untouched, other than the fact that they're healed. I don't know what the answer is there, because if that can happen to Jesus, when he's standing there physically in front of you, I'm sure it can happen to us. We have the same spirit, we have the same yeah. power that yeah. allowed him to rise from the dead. Exactly. We don't feel like that. Before. We don't. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's good to remember that. But we need to have that encounter, don't we, with the risen Lord Jesus that says, like that Roman soldier, with an almost a kind of terrified look on our faces, what if it's true? Mm. I think the challenge comes a bit to what Alan was saying is this hunger, isn't it? Yes. Do we really, do I? He, really hunger for the spirit to work through me because I can't, I mean we can't bring a single person however good we are, whatever we do it's a work of God now do I really hunger after that coming through to help people, the answer is really not that, not that I should yeah, it's, it comes back all the time and we get, we get demoralised as I'm sure Jesus did you know, I'm sure Jesus felt demoralised when he healed somebody and they went away and didn't get it but it didn't stop him from looking for the next person now we were talking in our um, home group on Thursday morning about people of peace people that you just get a sense that actually they might be receptive to what's going on uh, we've got one little girl in uh, well, we've got a few but we've got one little girl particularly in particular in the girls who is open to what God is saying we, uh, she comes out with some amazing stuff she shares some, well breaks your heart stuff that this little girl shares with girls with open men. Um, but you have to pull yourself together. You know? And uh, yesterday we did the whole session on prayer in various different ways. And we were talking about how prayer is very, very uh, private actually between you and God. You can share anything with God. And we were going to stick our prayers to the wall. Um, we have a bit of wallpaper that looks like a wall because in the prayer room you can go and have a um, she came up to me and she said, I don't know if I want to stick this on the wall because it's a bit embarrassing. And I said, it's fine, you know, she said, because look what I've written is, please God help me because I've got 23% on my mouth. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you, it breaks your heart, but this, this, this child understands that God understands that. This is an opening, this is, this is the spirit of work, you know. Uh, the ones that trot out a lovely prayer, dear God, thank you for my cat. Well, you know, there's a lot of that. Well, there's a lot of cats, wasn't there? Yeah. <laughs> that, that really challenged me. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this child, there's something coming on. You know, this friend, I can't remember if it was the Bowles Club or how you met Bowles. Um, you know, there's something going on. But if we haven't had an encounter with Jesus, if we're not in touch with him, we're not going to pick up, we're not going to have that radar that picks up who's likely to be receptive. Oh, yeah. To get that, that passion, like Robert said, of, of desperately wanting the spirit to fill us because we've got a job to do, haven't we? A mission uh, that only we can do. I feel like I've just dropped a load of stuff on you and, and you've processed it brilliantly. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really encouraged by the stuff that you've come out with, but can I just encourage you to anything that I've said that sounds like an answer, just leave, just leave it. <laughs> and uh, any, any seeds, uh, write some stuff down, reflect about it later in the day, feed it back. Uh, you know, often the last person the Spirit speaks to in a church about the direction of the minister. We're supposed to add our business to listen to God's speaking to you. And if, uh, you know, if, he's, if you're not telling us, it relies on us and that's stressful. Right, I think you're, are you off to jump?